So are you tired of tables in Excel like me? And what might the alternatives be to using tables in Excel? So what am I talking about here? Well, make sure you download the download file and work along with me. When would you need to use an Excel table? Well, if we've got a data set that we know is going to change in size, and this data set, our analysis of trading systems, we want to add more data to the bottom and we want our analysis to work. What is our analysis? We want to know how profitable is each trading system over time. We've got the home win and away win system. Then we've got our profit and loss over here. Let's go over to the, to the analysis sheet. And you might say, well, Chris, that's easy. We just put a pivot table in and then we can reference the table that I previously created. We go to change data source. We can see we're referencing a table here and then everything is going to work. Well, it will work as long as you can put up with Excel tables. Now, what annoys me about tables? I just find them a bit unpredictable. So if I want to put a value in here, suddenly I've got another column and the same thing's going to happen if I want to put data below. And then, but this really annoys me, the way you have to reference column columns when you're building formulae in tables. So for these reasons, I don't like tables. Also don't like the fact you automatically get a named range. It's like having junk hanging around in the file. This is why I don't use tables in Excel. In this video, I'm going to show you my dynamic approach to doing analysis in Excel. That means no matter how big your data set gets within reason, you're going to be able to get the analysis you need at the click of a button. I'm going to demonstrate that for you in just a second. But if we're meeting for the first time, a big welcome to Tiger Spreadsheet Solutions. I'm Chris Mortimer. I'm a real world Excel consultant, content creator, and lecturer. I love bringing the powerful stuff in Excel to people like you. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you download our free Excel cheat sheet mini course. It comes with our formula trainer tool. I've laid it out all for you, the things you need to know in Excel. It's gonna save you time and get your Excel learning going in the right direction. With that said, make sure you download the download file and work along with me. This one is a little bit complicated, but it's going to be well worth it. Let me just demonstrate what I'm talking about here. So we're talking about data sets that change size. So I'm just going to kind of duplicate the data, simulate adding more data to this data set. So we've got double the amount of data here. So has my solution responded to this? Let's have a look. And we can see it's updated straight away. It's a beautiful dynamic solution. I'm going to show you how we do that. Even the pivot table hasn't updated. I've got to go and manually refresh the pivot table. Again, this for me is a drawback of working with tables. In this case, a pivot table in Excel. So how's it all working? Well, perhaps you've already spotted. I'm using the indirect formula to create what's called a dynamic range here. Now, some people I know will be furious. I'm using indirect. It is what's called a volatile formula in Excel, and that can think, can slow things down. But not if you're only using a few formulae. If you're using two or three indirect formulae to get this awesome dynamic power, it's not going to affect the performance of the spreadsheet you're not going to be able to tell. So just a few indirect formulae should be absolutely fine. Now, it does take some setup. So I'm going to go through it now. I'm going to go to the engine sheet. This setup is all working already. I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. We're going to work through it now. Firstly, we need one formula, just one formula, that's going to count the number of entries on whatever data set that you're looking at. So use the count a formula here. I'm going to navigate to the selection sheet and just select this cell and then you can go down a few rows if you want to. So you've got to decide how big is your data set going to be. I'm going to go to 10,000 here, uh, one, two, three, 10,000. And then you've got to make a note here. This is the weakness of, of, of my approach, because if you exceed 10,000, Excel isn't necessarily going to tell you. So I'm going to make a note here, note max. 10,000 rows. I'm using 10,000. You could use 100,000. You could even reference the whole spreadsheet, but that will create some inefficiency in the file. It might not be discernible, but in the background, it will slow things down a little bit. So with this cell, we're counting the number of selections. I can go and confirm that, counting the number of rows on the selection sheet. Control shift down. I can see at the bottom of Excel, it says 20. So, so far, so good putting together the indirect formula. Then we've got to put the first row in because what indirect does, it allows us to write a reference in a cell. We could manually write it if we wanted to or use formally to generate a reference. Then indirect is going to read that reference. This is the power of indirect. Don't worry if that doesn't make sense. We're going to go through it in the next few minutes. So the first row 
is row five. I'm going to put that in. And then how would we get the last row? Well, it would be the first row plus the number of entries and then minus one. We've got last row 24. I'm going to go and confirm that. And I can see 24 is the last row. So slowly we're building up the picture. What else do we need? Well, in this case, we're working across sheets. So we need the sheet name. And I recommend putting the exclamation mark that Excel uses to join together the sheet name to the reference. So we've got the sheet name and then we need to think what specific formula, uh, what specific, uh, what specific columns do we want to reference in our analysis? Well, I know looking at our original question and I always recommend writing down the question that you're trying to answer with your analysis. How profitable is each trading system over time? So the system name, we're going to have to use that column and the profit and loss, we're going to have to use that column. So I need column N, which is profit and loss and column C, which is the system name. So I need to write out those references, then indirect can kind of read them for us. The profit and loss column letter, as we just saw, is column N. And then the system column letter is column C. I'm just going to go and check that. And that seems to be accurate. So we're now ready to concatenate, to join together all this text, and then indirect is going to be able to read it. But this, this really is the tricky bit, joining together all this text. I'm going to do something quickly. If you're working in this download file, just open up the um, name manager, go to name manager, and then we're going to delete uh, these names in the file. In fact, we're going to go ahead and delete all the names apart from the table. You don't have to do this, but it's going to make the demonstration a little bit more uh, realistic. So I've just deleted the names and we're going to recreate those. That's all part of the process. So here, let's begin to build this reference. So equals, then what do we want first? Well, we want the sheet name. So I'm navigating to the cell. I want to fix this reference because I'm going to pull this reference down uh, into row 10 to get the system column reference. So we've got selections. Then what, what do we have next in an Excel reference? Well, next it's the column letter, isn't it? So I'm going to put an and sign in and then navigate over here to the column letter. And that's fine as a relative reference. That's going to move down with the formula. So we've got the column letter. Then what do we have next? Next we have the column, uh, the row number. And it's the row number from the beginning of the selection, which is the first row. And I'm going to fix this using the F4 key. Then what do we have? We've got a letter and a number. So N6. What do we then have? Well, we then have a colon. So we've got to hit the and sign and speech marks. Open the speech marks, colon, close the speech marks. Yes, you've got to be very detail focused here. And to be honest, I always get it wrong first time. I might get it wrong today. We'll just go ahead and fix it. So we've got our colon. Then what's next? Well, it's going to be that column letter again. And then what's after that? Well, it's going to be the last row of the selection. So a number that's being generated by this formula. Hit the F4 key. And that, I think, is everything we need. So I hope you've been able to work along with that big concatenation. The and signs, the ampersands, allowing us to join together text strings and cell references. They make the magic happen. So I'm going to hit enter now. What have we got? Selections N5 to N24. Seems OK. So I'm going to take this down with Control D. If I've got my referencing right, if I've got the absolute references in the right places, this seems to work well. So I've actually managed to write out the selection there. And we can go ahead. I'm just going to delete some of the data here to prove this is working. Alt H D R to delete this data. So we've now got between rows five and 14. If this is working, then the references should have updated and it has updated to N5, to N14, C5, to C14. So, so far so good. But before we put this all together, let's do a mini test. Always do test as you go along and do a kind of mini test just to check everything's working first. So I want to sum up the values in the PL column. That's what we're going to do. And we're going to use the references that we've created and indirect. We can see we've got the profit and loss reference here. So I can say equals sum, open bracket, and then here it comes, indirect. We pop that in, open the bracket, and then navigate to the cell where we've put together our reference. Close the bracket again. If everything's working, we should get a number here. We've got minus 1.5587. 
Can we confirm that? And I'm going to go down here, select everything. We can see we've got minus 1.56 with the rounding. You know, that's close enough. So that gives me a clue that everything's working so far. Now, remember, we deleted those ranges, those named ranges. We're going to go ahead and recreate them now. With the cells that contain these references, I recommend you name the cells because it's going to make them easier to reference informally. So uh, I'm going to use my naming convention. So I use the first letter of the sheet name, which is E. And I'm going to say E um, col ref. Now I'm going to say E P L ref here because it's the reference for the P and L column. Hit enter. And then here I'm going to say E again because we're on the engine sheet, engine sheet underscore and then sys and then ref. So I've got E sys ref and EPL ref, not absolutely necessary, but it's going to make the formula building easier. Now back, back across to the analysis sheet and we can see suddenly everything's working. Now, why is it working? Well, we've got a simple countifs formula here. Now, if we're using countifs, we've got to, we've got to give a criteria range first. Now, I'm going to do this uh, using normal formula reference, references. Now, the criteria range we want is going to be the system range here. So I'm just going to go for selections, and I'm going to say selection C3 to C14, C5 to C14, rather. Hit enter, and I can see that formula is working fine. So I've put that reference in just to illustrate what we're doing with indirect. So that's a static reference. It's not going to work if we add more data in. We need to substitute that for our indirect formula. So I can now say indirect, click over to the engine sheet. In fact, I don't even have to do that. I can just say E. And in this case, I want to reference the system cell. So I can just click on the uh, e -sys ref name, hit the tab key, and that's going to go in. I can hit enter and I can see everything seems to be working well. And you can take the time to review the other formula. I won't go through this. The video will get too long, but I've just substituted normal cell references for references using the indirect formula to those references that we just created on the engine sheet. So is this all going to work? So I'm going to go ahead and once again, copy this data down, control C, control V. So how much data have we got? Uh, we've got 20 rows of data now. And then what's the value? Uh, if we add up all the values in the profit and loss column, it's minus 3.12. And I can see uh, if I add these up, I can see at the bottom of Excel, minus 312. And we've got 20 entries there. So what about it? Using indirect, you can get the power that you, you would get from a table in terms of how uh, being able to work with data sets that are growing. You can get all that without using a table if you can use the indirect formula. It takes a bit of setup and we shouldn't use too many indirect formulae because they can so the shows, slow the spreadsheet down, but just a few can help you create magic in Excel and avoid having to use yet another Excel table. Let me know what you think in the comments below, guys. The next video to watch is in the pinned comment below this video. I'll see you there.